Welcome to the 2023 CompTIA A Plus 220-1101 Hardware and Network Troubleshooting Practice Test. This test will have 20 questions with explained answers that will help you prepare for the test. Be sure to reboot that like button by turning it white. Now here's your CompTIA instructor to walk you through the questions. Question 1. What is the first step in the troubleshooting process? A. Identify the problem. B. Establish a theory or probable cause. C. Establish a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution. D. Make backups of your data. The correct answer is A. Identify the problem. The first step in troubleshooting process is to identify the problem. Once the issue is identified, the technician can move on to establishing a theory or probable cause, creating a plan of action, and implementing the solution. It is important to make backups of any data before you make any changes. Question 2. What is the second step in the troubleshooting process? A. Establish a theory or probable cause. B. Make backups of your data. C. Identify the problem. D. Implement the solution. The correct answer is B. Make backups of your data. The second step in the troubleshooting process is to make backups of any data before making any changes. This ensures that any changes or solutions implemented do not cause any data loss. Once the data is backed up, the technician can move on to identify the problem, establish a theory or probable cause, and implementing the solution. Question 3. What is the last step in the troubleshooting process? A. Make backups of your data. B. Identify the problem. C. Implement the solution. D. Document findings, actions, and outcomes. The correct answer is D. Document findings, actions, and outcomes. The last step in the troubleshooting process is to document the findings, actions, and outcomes. This helps to ensure that the issue has been resolved and also serves as a record of the troubleshooting process. Once the documentations have been made, the technician can then move on to make backups of any data before making any changes, identifying the problem, and implementing the solution. Question 4. What should be done before making any changes in the troubleshooting process? A. Establish a theory or probable cause. B. Make backups of your data. C. Implement the solution. D. Document findings, actions, and outcomes. The correct answer is B. Make backups of your data. Before making any changes in the troubleshooting process, it is important to make backups of any data that may be affected by the changes being made. This ensures that no data is lost during the troubleshooting process and also helps to ensure that the issue has been resolved properly. Once the data is backed up, the technician can then move on to identifying the problem, establishing a theory or probable cause, and implementing the solution. Question 5. You have a problem with a server or other network component that prevents any users from working. What type of problem is this? A. Hardware issue. B. Software issue. C. Shared resource issue. D. Network issue. The correct answer is C. Shared resource issue. When many users are unable to work due to a problem with a server or other network component, it is likely that this is a shared resource issue. This type of problem can be caused by hardware, software, or network issues and requires further investigation in order to identify the root cause. Once the cause has been identified, it can then be addressed appropriately. Question 6. A single window user suddenly can't connect to any hosts on the network, local or remote. Jerry, the IT technician, suspects this could be a DNS issue. What should Jerry do next in the troubleshooting process? A. Establish a theory or probable cause. B. Make backups of your data. C. Implement the solution. D. Test the theory to determine cause. The correct answer is D. Test the theory to determine the cause. 
After suspecting that this could be a DNS issue, Jerry should test his theory to determine if it is indeed causing the problem with connecting to hosts on the network, local or remote. Once he has tested his theory and determined if it is true, then he can move on to making backups of any data before making any changes, establishing a plan of action to resolve the problem and implement the solution, and document findings, actions, and outcomes. Question 7. Susan has a network with a domain name system, DNS server, a proxy server, and an internet router. The user is complaining that she suddenly can't connect to hosts on her own local area network, LAN, and other internal LANs, and she can't access hosts on the Internet. What is the likeliest problem? A. DNS issue. B. Proxy server issue. C. User's local configuration. D. Firewall issue. The correct answer is C. User's local configuration. A network routing issue is the likeliest problem in this scenario, as it would explain why the user cannot connect to hosts on their own LAN or other internal LANs, as well as why they cannot access hosts on the Internet. It is possible that a DNS or proxy server could be causing the problem, but it is more likely that there is a problem with how data is being routed between networks or devices. Question 8. Jill is working on the help desk when a user calls and reports that she is unable to connect to the Internet. Which of the following steps is the one Jill is least likely to perform first when troubleshooting the problem? A. Check the user's job title to see if she is an important person in the company. B. Ask the user to restart her computer. C. Check the configuration of the modem connecting the LAN to the Internet. D. Test connectivity between two machines on the same network. The correct answer is D. Test connectivity between two machines on the same network. Testing connectivity between two machines on the same network is least likely to be performed first when troubleshooting a user's inability to connect to the Internet, as it would not provide any useful information about why they are unable to connect. Alice is more likely to ask by checking configurations of routers and modems, and then move on to ask users if they have restarted their computers before moving on to testing connections within networks. Question 9. Bill is a first-tier support technician. He receives the help calls listed here. His job is to assign them priorities based on their severity. Which of the following should be the problem that receives the highest priority? A. User is unable to access a file in their shared folder. B. User is unable to connect to the Internet. C. Printer on the network is offline. D. Network cable has been unplugged from a machine. The correct answer is B. User is unable to connect to the Internet. The user's inability to connect to the Internet should receive the highest priority when assigning priorities based on severity, as this would have an immediate and widespread effect on multiple users. Other problems, such as access files in shared folders and printers being offline, would only affect one or two users at a time, while an unplugged network cable would only affect one user at most. Question 10. Which of the following Windows tools uses ICMP messages and manipulates IPv4 time-to-lie values to illustrate the route packets take through an internetwork? A. Trace RT B. Pathping C. Netstat D. IP Config The correct answer is Trace RT TraceRT is a Windows tool that uses ICMP messages and manipulates IPv4 time-to-lie values to illustrate the route packets take through an internetwork, which can be useful for troubleshooting network issues such as latency or packet loss. 
Other Windows tools, such as PathPing, NetStat, and IPConfig, are also used for troubleshooting, but do not use ICMP messages or manipulate time-to-live values in the same way that TraceRT does. TraceRoot is like TraceRT, but on Unix and Mac. Question 11. You receive a call from a user who says his computer is running slow. What should you do first? A. Establish a theory or probable cause. B. Make backups of your data. C. Ask the user to provide more information about the problem. D. Test the theory to determine cause. The correct answer is C. Ask the user to provide more information about the problem. When troubleshooting, it is important to gather as much information as possible before attempting to solve the issue. Asking the user to provide more information about their problem, such as when they noticed it began happening, and what they were doing at the time, will help narrow down potential causes and allow for better troubleshooting. Once enough details have been gathered, then one can move on to establishing a theory or probable cause, making backups of data before making any changes, and testing theories in order to determine causes. Question 12. What is the purpose of creating a plan of action when troubleshooting? A. To identify the problem. B. To ensure backups are made before making any changes. C. To test theories to determine causes. D. To track progress and document findings, actions, and outcomes. The correct answer is D. To track progress and document findings, actions, and outcomes. Creating a plan of action when troubleshooting helps to track progress throughout the process as well as allowing for documentation of findings, actions taken, and outcomes achieved during resolution efforts. Once a plan has been created, it can then be used to help identify problems in order to establish theories or probable causes as well as testing those theories in order to determine causes more easily. Finally, it ensures that proper backups have been made before making any changes, which will prevent data loss from occurring should something go wrong during resolution attempts. Question 13. Which of the following types of wiring faults cannot be detected by the wire map tester? A. Split pairs. B. Open circuits. C. Short circuits. D. Transposed wires. The correct answer is A. Split pairs. Split pairs are wiring faults that cannot be detected by a wire map tester, as they involve two wires in the same pair being connected to different pins on the connector. Other types of wiring faults, such as open circuits, short circuits, and transposed wires, can all be detected by the wire map tester. Question 14. After connecting a tone generator to the green wire at one end of a twisted pair cable run, Jerry proceeds to the other end of the cable and touches the locator to each of the eight pins in turn. The green wire and the green striped wire both produce a tone. What type of wiring fault has Jerry discovered? A. Split pair. B. Short circuit. C. Transposed wires. D. Far end crosstalk. The correct answer is B. Short circuit. When a tone generator is connected to the green wire at one end of a twisted pair cable run and both the green wire and the green striped wire produce a tone when touched with the locator at the other end, this indicates that there is a short circuit. Other types of wiring faults, such as split pairs, far-end crosstalk, and transposed wires would not produce this result. Question 15. Which of the following Windows command line utilities produces the contents of the address resolution protocol cache? A. NSLOOKUP B. IPCONFIG C. ARP A D. NETSTAT CORRECT The correct answer is ARP a. The command line utility ARP, with the flag A, will produce the contents of the address resolution protocol ARP cache, 
which is used to resolve IP addresses into MAC or physical addresses on a local network. Other Windows command line utilities, such as NSLOOKUP and IPConfig, do not produce this result. While NetStat can be used to view ARP statistics, but not the actual ARP cache itself. Question 16. What is the name for a device that determines the length of a cable by transmitting a signal at one end and measuring how long it takes for a reflection of the signal to return from the other end? A. Millimeter. B. Cable tester. C. Time domain reflectometer. D. Network analyzer. The correct answer is C. Time domain reflectometer. A time domain reflectometer, TDR, is a device used to measure the length of a cable by sending out a signal at one end and measuring how long it takes for reflections of that signal to be returned from the other end, thus providing an indication as to its length or any faults such as open circuits or short circuits encountered along its route. Other devices such as multimeters, Cable testers and network analyzers do not perform this specific task. Question 17. You notice that your computer is frequently randomly freezing or restarting, but scan results for hardware and software issues show no issues. What steps should you take to troubleshoot this issue? A. Check CPU temperatures, check RAM slots for loose connections, reseat memory modules and power cables. B. Open up the case to inspect components visually and check internal temperatures. C. Troubleshoot the motherboard using manufacturer's diagnostic tools. D. Install updated versions of drivers and BIOS updates. The correct answer is A. Check CPU temperatures, check RAM slots for loose connections, reseat memory modules and power cables. Whenever a computer is showing signs of random freezes or restarts, it can be helpful to start with basic checks, such as inspecting physical components, such as checking RAM slots for any looseness or damage, reinstalling all power supply cables connectors within the system unit to ensure adequate electricity flow running diagnostics on all installed parts like processors, RAMs, etc. Question 18. You have received a new server, and the RAID 5 array will not boot. What steps should you take to troubleshoot this issue? A. Check all power cables are connected. Check BIOS settings are correct. Run diagnostics on each drive in the array. B. Update software drivers and firmware versions for each drive. Inspect physical components visually for damage, looseness. C. Reset drives that appear to be failing or missing from the boot order list. Replace any failed drives with known good ones. D. Test network connection between devices to ensure it is functioning properly. The correct answer is A. Check all power cables are connected. Check BIOS settings are correct. Run diagnostics on each drive in the array. When dealing with an issue related to RAID arrays, such as a failure during initialization or reboot attempts, it is important firstly ensure external connections, especially power cabling, etc., is secure. Proceed further by checking BIOS configuration at settings, then running individual diagnostic scans of installed drives against the manufacturer's recommended parameters. Question 19. The video on the projector has lost its sharpness and clarity. What should be done to troubleshoot this issue? A. Change signal connectors. Update graphics drivers. Change resolution settings. B. Clean lens filters. Check power cables are connected properly. Adjust brightness, contrast, color levels of image on projector. C. Check refresh rate is compatible with display device. Try a different VGA connection cable. D. Reinstall operating system for updated versions of software. The correct answer is B. Clean lens filters. Check power cables are connected properly. 
Adjust brightness, contrast, color levels of image on projector. These are the possible steps to troubleshoot a video that lost sharpness and clarity. The other options do not relate directly to the issue discussed. Question 20. You are attempting to connect a mobile device to Wi-Fi, but the connection fails. What should you do? A. Update firmware. Turn airplane mode off on. Adjust settings on router. B. Reset network configuration settings of device. Adjust wireless channel setting on router. C. Change signal connectors. Update graphics drivers. D. Reinstall OS for updated versions of software. The correct answer is B. Reset network configuration settings of device. When dealing with failed connections within portable electronic gadgetry, possessing capabilities connecting toward distant access points, better first initiate soft reset upon all previously configured networking protocols, then progress further by changing Wi-Fi hotspot private channel frequency, since overextended utilization generally can lead issues taking place. Otherwise, simply double-checking if disabling plane mode present accordingly, setup process needs doing again would prevent symptoms such irritation immediately. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Check out these videos that can help you with your CompTIA exam. If you need more help beyond these videos, we have free practice tests on our website. We have all the links down in the description below. Don't forget to reboot that like button and subscribe to our channel.